Hello everybody and welcome to Cubone. My name is Quinton and I totally forgot to check the galactic map before we started this because there is some shit going down. Welcome everybody to Helldivers Tuesday. Today is May 28th, 2024 and I'm not wearing my Helldivers hat. That's much better. Moving on to the weekly recap. Last Tuesday, we were working on the Eradicate mission to defeat 3.14 billion enemies, breaking 2 billion throughout the day. Additionally, we hadn't easily dealt with defense on touring that was complete that evening. Over the night through Wednesday, divers were gradually working through Pandion 24 and Vernon Wells. We were able to get each planet up to 72% and 61% respectively, and up to nearly 2.3 billion enemies for the major order. This is despite the player count once again dropping lower than ever. Over the previous weekend, player count had raised to nearly 100,000, but by Wednesday it had dropped back down to just over 64,000, the lowest yet. Back to planetary news, Wednesday evening saw Pandion 24 come back under Super Earth control, with more divers quickly moving to Vernon Wells, expected to control it again by Thursday. A very important announcement was made Wednesday, as the now former CEO of Arrowhead Studios, Palstead, announced that he'd be switching roles to Chief Creative Officer, while, as I understand it is pronounced, Shams Georgiani? God, I really hope that's right. Would be filling the vacant role as CEO. Hey everyone, big update. I've decided to hire Shams Georgiani as the new CEO of Arrowhead Game Studios. We go way back, and I wouldn't trust the business in any other hands than his, and he comes with an impressive resume and love for games. But what about me and my involvement in Helldivers 2? Well, I'm glad you asked. I'm taking the role of Chief Executive Officer, which means I will spend more time with the team and 100% of my focus on the games and community. A lot of players have been confused by this as uh, they... I haven't actually, I've not seen a single person talking about Shams Rajani. Everybody's still talking about Palstead as though they're in charge. Palstead stated that he supports and trusts Rajani, and for now, that's good enough for me. Hopefully, Palstead can be more hands on the way he seems to want. To wrap up Wednesday, while Vernon Wells was still making steady progress, quite a few divers had moved to Fact Bay, determined to clear the southern front with the final planet in the Jin Z sector. It is worth noting, of course that around this time we were losing around 5,000 players every single day. And while that number has since gone back up, for a time being it was very troubling to say the least. Early Thursday was quite eventful. First off at 5.30 a.m. Mountain Daylight Time, two new planets came under attack, Arata Prime and a new planet, Wezen or Weezen. I, di I don't know. I, ha I didn't go to the planet. I'm sorry. A few hours later, we did fail the eradication major order once again. Major order failed. Huge quantities of Terminids and Automatons have been righteously terminated by the Valiant Helldivers, but not in high enough quantities to further inspire the already unquestionable patriotic citizens of Super Earth. They will continue to support the war effort with unquestionable unity and grim determination, yearning for a more hopeful future. I was very confident that we could complete the major order in time, but it seems that the reduced reinforcements we've been experiencing took a heavier toll than I expected, and so we ended just shy, I believe. With roughly six and a half hours left to go, I got a number saying we were at 2.68 billion, which is about 85% of the major order. So within that six hours, we probably would have made it up to maybe about 90%. So I, I think we were a lot closer than it feels like we were, and I Weird, like, I know this is uh, a, a bit weird to say, but I really wish we had gotten some kind of partial credit reward, because we really did. We put in a lot of work for that, and unfortunately, it, it just wasn't enough. Almost immediately after, however, a new major order began. The new major order, we have acquired imagery of a massive new automaton factory nearing completion on the planet Virilia 5. This factory, if liberated, could be retrofitted to allow the construction of a dual autocannon exosuit variant, the XO-49 Emancipator Exosuit. The Helldivers are ordered to liberate Virilia 5. Surveillance Satellite Security has acquired imagery of a massive automaton factory on the planet Virilia 5. Structural analysis indicates a clear resemblance to the famed Morganson Arsenal on Tian Quan. Clearly, this is a crude attempt at replicating the quality craftsmanship of that facility. 
But this automaton peta factory, as enemy transmissions call it, is merely an aberrant imitation. Its only purpose is to mass produce weapons of war in order to further the automaton's totalitarian agenda. Its worker drones are forced to labor non-stop and the environmental impacts are devastating. However, this undemocratic abomination may yet be turned to an instrument of freedom. With low-cost alterations, the Peta Factory could be retrofitted to allow the construction of a dual autocannon exosuit variant, the XO-49 Emancipator uh, exosuit. The Helldiver's order to liberate Virilia 5 immediately before it becomes too despotic to salvage. So many things back to back left Helldivers spread thin as 62% of divers rightly focused on Virilia 5, expecting to complete it in less than two days. This left not only both defenses undefended at 12% and 1% respectively of the player count, but meant that Vernon Wells was gradually being lost once again, with 4% of players despite having reached nearly 90% liberation that morning. Morning. Much of what happened on Thursday continued on through Friday morning. The two defenses were lost due to insufficient reinforcements, Vernon Wells continued dropping to 77%, and Virilia 5's liberation slowly grew despite the bots fighting hard to hold it. Despite nearly 70,000 divers fighting for it overnight, the planet was still under 40% by morning. If we didn't get more divers, it looked unlikely we'd earn our mechs and bring freedom to the planet. By Friday's end, this trend continued until Virilia 5's liberation plateaued just under 60%. This was due in part to dropping players on the planet, as around 1.30, Angel's Venture came under attack. We were told by High Command to prioritize the defense, and were just barely able to keep Liberation higher than the bugs could take it, leaving the planet's fate in the air. The strategic guidance that we received alongside an intel brief. Right before the Angel's Venture defense, we did get an intel brief stating that the spore activity on the Meridian super colony has sharply increased. Sudden terminate outbreaks on previously safe planets may increase in frequency as a result. And so we were also given a strategic guidance message. The terminates are attacking Angel's Venture. If they succeed, the valuable newly constructed SEAF training facility on the planet will be destroyed, which will significantly decrease the capability of the SEAF to aid in Galactic defense. Super Earth High Command recommends prioritizing the defense of Angel's Venture. This left Virilia 5 teetering between our advantage and the bots. As expected, Vernon Wells was once again all but abandoned, decaying gradually down to 62%. This was unlikely to slow soon as the Meridian Super Colony had a sharp increase in spore activity, meaning likely more outbreaks on previously safe planets, as I read in the dispatch a moment ago. Saturday morning saw Angel's Venture's defense slow to a close with Super Earth, of course, proving victorious. Around 1.30, a big change came to give us hope as the bots started to run low on reinforcements, the regen rate dropping back down to 3.5% per hour. Strategic update, automaton resistance has faltered, no doubt due to the stalwart and unrelenting pressure applied by the Valiant Helldivers. Maintain the offensive, liberate the Peta Factory on Virilia 5. This put us at an estimated... 12 hours at the time to take the planet, and with just under three days on the MO, victory seemed possible. Around the same time, Fenrir 3 came under attack, and unfortunately, with divers focused on Virilia 5, the defense would have to wait until Virilia was complete for us to move in, and we'd have to hope it wouldn't be too late. Saturday rolled around to Sunday, Virilia broke 80%. Though, with numbers dropping through the night, it would have to wait until morning to complete. Also, despite more divers attempting re to reinforce, the push didn't appear to be enough as the bots kept ahead of us. As Sunday's noon crept up, the Major Order was thankfully complete, a win that we really needed. Major Order has been won! The Automaton Peta Factory on Virilia 5 has been liberated by the Helldivers, thwarting their expansion and allowing production to begin on the XO-49 Emancipator Exosuit our new stratagem. That wasn't our only dispatch, however, as we were kept from Fenrir 3 by the bugs attacking another planet, Heath. First off, we got an intel brief stating that spore production on the Meridian Super Colony has doubled overnight, indicating continued evolution of the Terminid threat. Increased Terminid outbreaks on nearby planets is highly likely. Helldivers are advised to exercise extreme vigilance in stamping out these outbreaks lest they spread out of control. This also led us to getting a strategic guidance post. The Terminids are attacking Heath, the site of a newly constructed SEAF training facility. 
If the planet falls, the capability of the Seif to replenish their forces and thereby aid in galactic defense will be significantly impacted. Therefore, Super Earth High Command recommends prioritizing the defense of Heath. Oh my god, I have so much to go through today. We will regain that Seif bonus eventually, but for now, we were holding Heath, even if it meant the loss of Fenrir 3. Vernon Wells had dropped to 36%, but once the defenses were clear, surely divers would jump to it and reclaim it for liberty. That's called foreshadowing. Divers were getting their liberty on while I was busy playing Call of Duty Zombies on my latest stream. Shameless plug. Go ahead and check that out. I stream Call of Duty Zombies every Sunday now. Please, for the love of God, check that out. The last one did pretty well, actually. While Fenrir was unexpectedly lost, the defense being completed between Sunday night and Monday morning. Divers had also begun working through Vernon Wells again, approaching 50% through the night. Also, something should be said about the new mechs. I believe they're kind of a big problem. I'm gonna be completely honest. So don't get me wrong, I love mechs and the new one adds a fun new option, but it's just not fun enough. We collectively fought for roughly half a week to unlock these and the damage is absolutely pitiful. First, the new mech is pretty explicitly designed for the bot front over bugs as it's near impossible to use up close, and people have been clear they don't enjoy playing on the bot front. Secondly, it doesn't even work as intended, with the auto cannon and the auto cannon sentry both doing equal damage to what is known as durable damage, uh, roughly 300 and 260 respectively, I believe. This means that they're as effective on durable enemies like Titans, Striders, and Tanks as they are on fodder. The mech doesn't do this, as it instead does about 240 regular damage, but only about 60 durable damage. This means that it is effectively useless on Titans, but more importantly on Tanks and Factory Striders, which is a huge loss considering its 2 use limit and 10 minute cooldown. So this is all a problem because the community is in a dangerous state. Over 170 countries still do not have access to the game after the PSN debacle, and with player count plummeting daily, the community needed a win. Something this underwhelming could be the last straw before we see a drop in players like never before. Here's hoping these promised patch notes are the savior that we needed. That said, we do have a new major order alongside a strategic update. Enemy aggression on both fronts remains unrelenting, in particular the super colony on Meridia is fueling an unprecedented surge in terminate infestation rates. The automatons grow in power as well, continuing their unjust invasion. Our analysts are certain that nothing could have forestalled this dire situation, save perhaps the timely employment of MD-17 anti-tank mines. I'm just saying guys, nobody likes the airburst. Could we have just gotten the tank mines? Scientists on Moradesh are making progress on a way to combat the super colony. That will be Liberty's salvation. Until then, the Helldivers must hold the line at all cost. The new major order states in Operation Enduring Peace Phase 1, the time has come to address the terminated super colony on Meridia. Using an experimental substance weaponized by our top scientific minds, the Helldivers will conduct a targeted strike to permanently end the threat posed by the super colony. The first phase of this operation is to secure a route to Meridia and hold the staging ground until sufficient quantities of dark fluid can be weaponized and deployed. This is the priority. All other territorial losses are acceptable to ensure the success of this operation. As the dispatch says, we must clear a path to Meridia by holding Fenrir 3, Angel's Venture, and Touring until the major order completes in just over a day from the time of streaming. By the time this goes live as a video, uh, the major order will probably be over. To do this, we are to weaponize the new Dark Fluid, a very mysterious substance. We are to prioritize this over all the rest of the galaxy, regardless of all losses. We did have an interesting mishap at the Dark Fluid Research Facility, reported on by our lovely Coretta Kelly at Strawman News. Freedom's Greetings. I'm your host, Coretta Kelly. Today, the Dark Fluid Research Facility on Moradesh went into emergency shutdown, following what officials are describing as, quote, a close call. According to reports, the volatile exotic material suddenly collapsed into a micro black hole that spaghettified 12 facility members before evaporating. Production of weaponized dark fluid is scheduled to resume tomorrow, with no shortfalls projected in support of the ongoing operation to destroy the Terminid super colony. That's Liberty's latest. I'm Coretta Kelly.
always love our wonderful Coretta Kelly over at Straw Man News, always providing the truth, no matter what the cost. Additionally, I feel a correction is due on my part. I've stated that AH, Arrowhead, is working on a new balancing patch. I was working off of bad info, as on Monday, Community Manager on Twinbeard on Discord states, Hi, just to be clear, we've never called it a balance update or patch. Don't mean to sound blunt, it's just that it might send out the wrong signals by calling it that. Anyway, there's no official ETA on it yet. It's simmering nicely though, and we hope you'll like it. So while I still expect good things, it is not internally being referred to as a balance update or patch. Finally, for Monday, a defense mission began on Akamar 4, and over 11,000 divers disobeyed Hyde Command, putting their efforts there instead of the Major Order. Tuesday morning was seeing the bugs fight back. While we're focused on the MO, two more defenses began on top of Akamar 4, Cirrus to the northwest and Veld to the south. We need to hurry and blow this planet. Up. Up. We need to blow this planet up. By the time of the stream, we have all three planets and must hold them above all else for 40 hours, give or take. Finally, we received another dispatch, this time an emergency alert. The spore production on the Meridian Super Colony has risen to critical levels. Planets in the vicinity of the Super Colony are under imminent threat of infestation. Emergency evacuation orders have been issued. All hell divers are called to address this critical situation. After the stream, some important developments came through. By 8.30 Mountain Daylight Time, Veld had been completed. With Veld cleared and all three of the planets held for the Major Order, as of editing, this, we only have 18 hours left for the Major Order and no active defenses. In other words, we have unofficially completed it. Meaning by this time tomorrow, we'll be ready to rid the galaxy of the Meridian Super Colony. Additionally, though we had lost the defense on Cirrus, nearly 40,000 divers had taken to the planet to rectify that once the MO had been secured. By 3.30 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time, the planet had passed 92% with two hours, give or take, to go. Likewise, with Akamar 4, nearly 11,000 divers had gotten the planet up to over 75% by the same time. It's very possible, if not likely, that by the time this episode goes out, both planets will be complete. That's all the notes I have for today. With no further notes, I'm gonna go ahead and play this week's clip of the week. We actually have two today. I've gotten permission from both. So the first one is going to be from Reddit user Bad Drifter, with the clip being named Charger Jump Scare. As you can see, Helldivers constantly need to be vigilant, lest the enemy sneak up on us and, frankly, ruin our chance at democracy. Additionally, we do have one more clip. This clip has been provided by Reddit user B25Roman. Their YouTube channel is linked below in the description, and if you're watching the VOD tomorrow, that will be a pinned comment underneath the video. Please go check them out. A truly glorious sacrifice, and one that we should all strive to take on to ourselves. Always remember, if you must jump, jump for liberty. But that's all I have for today. I hope you all enjoyed. For those of you watching on the VOD, please make sure to check out the streams every Tuesday. That's today for those of you on the streams. And I also do streams on Thursdays, Fridays, and Sundays. Feel free to go check out my schedule on twitch.tv slash cubonyt to see what that schedule entails. And make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel, The Wall Crawling Cubone, to make sure you can keep up to date with any live streams that I have upcoming. Remember to be gay, do crimes, and we will see you next time. Bye-bye.